Yeah, thank you, Gary. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the New York Community Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Loretta Brooks, and it's nice to see all of you on this Sunday. So uh, we have a lot of things going on here, a lot of really good things, uplifting and inspirational things. So we warmly welcome you to the New York Community Center for Spiritual Living. And we're going to have, as we always do, our spiritual mind treatment. So please help me welcome Court Hassinger, our licensed practitioner. Court. of us um, establishing our own personal empowerment spiritually. So let's take a deep breath <clears throat> and sit straight up with our hands in the outright position. And here we go. This word is spoken into the law of mind and action for each one in this room, including myself, the speaker. We know and we recognize that there is one power and presence for good, and we know this power to be one God, one intelligence, and one mind. Each one here is unified with this one power because each one here was created from it. Therefore, each one here is divinely guided, intuitively directed, and inspired by way of their subconscious mind being divinely connected to the one mind of God. Let this truth now be known and declared into the law of mind in action that each one here is now understanding personal spiritual empowerment, and each one here now knows that personal empowerment spiritually begins with our faith. Faith is a universal law, and each one here now understands that faith is complete when we consciously and subconsciously accept this law into our minds. And by embodying this truth about faith, we then become personally and spiritually empowered to manifest success and abundance in the square of our life, which includes health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression, and that is the truth. We also know that negative thoughts have no universal power. Therefore, negative thoughts are hereby now completely uprooted and dissolved away. Any negative thoughts we are harboring, which may include the opposite of faith, which is fear, is now dissolved and, <clears throat> and completely removed from our subconscious mind. And knowing that the universe abhors a vacuum from this new space of nothingness in our subconscious mind are only new thoughts of love, truth, and faith. And that is the truth. I hereby now affirm that each one here is now becoming more and more personally empowered <clears throat> spiritually by use of faith in their lives. I affirm this truth knowing that as we ask, so too shall we receive, for that is a spiritual law. I hereby now release this word into the realm of the absolute where all things are possible. This word is moving forward into the universal law of mind and action for, e for the benefit of each one here. This word is now lovingly, gratefully, <laughs> released into law for each one here and is doing its right and perfect work beginning right here and right now. So be it, and so it is. Amen. So it is. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful treatment. It really sets the tone for our lesson this morning. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Barbara Munlin. She's going to do our reading this morning, Barbara. Uh, I'm going to read from Creative Mind, Tapping the Power Within by Ernest Tomes, and I'm reading Impersonal Healing in keeping with today's message. The very presence of one that understands the truth will have a great power of healing. The reason for this is that we are all in mind, and we have with us at all times our thought. And since all manifestation is the result of mind in action, and we are thinking beings, and always causing mind to act, the very presence of our thought will have some power to act upon whatever we are thinking about. We are dealing with a power which is itself is limitless. We limit it, and so it cannot become to us the bigger thing. Of itself, the power is the same that made the worlds, and it cannot realize any sense of limitation. They could not enter in because of their unbelief. And because they limited the Holy One of Israel, stop limiting things. Things are as big as we make them, no more, no less. There is room at the top. Get on top of everything and dare to dominate the earth. All things are given to us, make use of them. 
Everything that is limitless, everything is limitless. And we must see the truth that the fault is not in the law, but in ourselves when we fail. Not with God, but with man. Dare, dare, dare. Think of the bigness of things in the universe. Think of the number of grains of sand, the profusion of all life, and never again limit anything. All is yours to use. Jesus would never have become the Christ unless he had the courage to say, behold, I am he. You will never attain anything until in some degree you're able to say the same thing of yourself. We must learn to reach out and take what is meant for us, the greater life, the all good. People say, yes, but how do you do it? Simply know that God makes things out of himself by speaking the word and that in your own life, you can do the same. All people can think, all people can think, at least mentally. This is all you need to begin. The word is at the center of all creation and his first cause, the starting point of all that we see. The word is in your own mouth. All that you have to do is speak it. The trouble is that we are speaking the word and the next breath we are denying its power by seeing something that contradicts it. If the word is the way that God creates, it is the right way. If it works for God, shall it not work for us? As yet our word is more or less imperfect but more and more it will become perfect. And so the outer conditions will be brought under the inner word. All words have as much power as we put into them when we speak. The word is already in your own mouths. The word is all you will ever need to bring happiness and health and success. Do you wish to live a perfect, in a perfect world, people with friends who love you, surrounded by all that is beautiful and pleasing? Well, if you do, if you wish to have the good things of life, there is but one way, and that way is as sure as the sun shines. Forget all else and think only upon what you want. Control all thoughts that denies the real, and as the myth disappears before the sun, so shall all adversity melt before the shining radiance of your own exalted thought. Beautiful reading. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. And so I just want to share with you uh, our announcements. Today we have a workshop about 1230 with Barbara and Fanny, and they are licensed practitioners. They're going to be teaching you about the power of your word. There are flyers on the back table. If you would like to be a part of this group this afternoon, I would really encourage you to do so. It's going to be about spiritual mind treatment and the power of your word, and how when you speak your word and when you do your treatment work, everything begins to change in your life. So I would really encourage all of you to take the uh, two weeks. It's going to begin today from 12.30 until 2 o'clock, and then next week as well, OK? There's a love offering suggested at the end of the two-week session. So I also want to share with you, uh, there's no more Wednesday nights. We did finish that up until the fall. But we will continue to have workshops throughout the summer on Sunday afternoon. We did have a wonderful community meeting last week. And those of you who were here, I just want to say thank you. I thought it went very well. It was very effective. And some of the things that I've begun to do, it's really amazing how when we all start to work together, that everything begins to unfold. So I was able to contact Carol Look, who is an EFT practitioner. She's the one who taught me how to do EFT. She's a master EFT practitioner. She's in Amsterdam right now. She goes all over the world to teach. And she's in agreement to uh, come here and do a workshop with us one evening. So that will really be a wonderful event. Uh, she's a very prosperous person, so I just have to kind of talk her into lowering her prices a little bit. <laughs> But we'll do that together in mind, OK? So that will be a wonderful opportunity for everyone. EFT is a wonderful method for tapping. It's really great for everyone. So that was one thing. I also, we did another book order. There's a lot of things that are going on. And I know that they will come into fruition. And I just want to thank all of you for your wonderful suggestions 
and it was a very effective, very productive meeting. And I think we should do them like maybe two or three times a year because it's very helpful to just keep up with what everyone would like to see more of at our center. So having said all of that, the workshop this afternoon I'm sure will be wonderful. We're continuing with our theme this month, which is spiritual healing. And my talk this morning is on spiritual power. So we're going to be doing that. And I know that all of you are going to leave this morning feeling better than when you came in. And I can just tell that we all need a lift today. Am I right about that? Yes, I can feel the energy. OK, so we're going to get that lift that we need. I know that. We all need a little bit of a lift. And that's why we're all here. And we will feel better when we leave than when we came in. And you will also feel a lot better if you take that workshop today. So let's take time now to wish each other a very happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday. So I was thinking of James and Julie because they were on a vacation last month and we missed them. They were in Hawaii. So that was wonderful. So we we're very grateful to have them back with us today. And please help me welcome them now for their wonderful music. just now we picked this song child of the universe because that's where your spiritual power comes from knowing you're a child of the universe but it also really references nature and all the wonderful things we enjoyed in Hawaii so it helps you reconnect child of this universe the ocean dances in my feet the wind plays a melody through my hair I am loved at every turn I am kissed by mother
Well, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. That is absolutely beautiful. Okay, so we're going to have our talk this morning, and our talk is all about spiritual power. The idea of spiritual power is really very important one, because when you think about it, spiritual power is really about spiritual love. It is really about the love that we have, the spiritual love. And so many things are happening in the world right now. You know, anyone, people are saying they're not listening to the news and everything, but we are still somewhat affected by it. And today, I just want to talk to you about this power that you have that is within you all of the time. It's always there. But our recognition of it is what brings it to life. When we recognize it, when we understand it, when we know what it is and how it works in our lives, we can utilize it for our greater good in our everyday life. And that is really what this lesson is about today. This lesson is all about not only spiritual healing, but spiritual power. And one of the books that I used for the lesson today is a book by Michael Beckwith called Spiritual Liberation. There's, I think, one of them on the back table, and I'll put this one back there as well. This is a wonderful book where Reverend Michael Beckwith speaks all about spiritual liberation, which is really spiritual love and spiritual power. And so I want to talk to you today about these kinds of things, about spiritual power as a form of spiritual love. So one of the stories I've been I've kind of thinking about different stories and everything, and one of the documentaries that I looked at this week on television was a story about Eric Clapton. Everybody knows who he is, right? He's one of the most, I think, one of the greatest guitar players in the world right now. B.B. King passed. He had a lot of information from B.B. King. They were very good friends, and Muddy Waters, and all these other kinds of musicians. But I want to share some stories with you this morning because I think these stories are very inspirational, and they also speak to our teaching. And our teaching is metaphysical, the idea that spiritually we can do things for ourselves that maybe on the human level we think we cannot. But when we go to the spirit, when we go to that power that is within us, it will create for us whatever it is that we would like to create in our lives. And so I was looking at this documentary. I've been looking at documentaries lately, which are very interesting because they're factual. They're all about people's lives and how they live them. And the story about Eric Clapton really, really touched me. You know, I actually met Eric Clapton many years ago. I was in a, uh, it was a, an all men's club and I was with Dr. Grayson's nephew. I was the only woman in there. I saw all these people. It was kind of one of these fancy clubs for men. I didn't know they still existed, but I guess they do. And they're in New York City. And I saw all these reporters like from CNN and all different places. And when I got on the elevator, uh, I, there were a group of people on the elevator, and this one man, I said to him, oh my goodness, did anyone ever tell you you look exactly like Eric Clapton? <laughs> and the one guy said, that is Eric Clapton. <laughs> and he laughed too. But anyway, the reason, the story that I'm going to tell you this morning is all about Eric Clapton and his life and about the power of spiritual love. This is really what this is about this morning, the power of spiritual love. Because spiritual love is very different from the human kind of love where you give something, you want something back, and you know, you give love because somebody bought you a bracelet or whatever, 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 all those kinds of things. Spiritual love is about the essence. It's about the essence of our humanity. It's about the essence of who we are as people. And so Eric Clapton, you know, we have this idea about people that because they're successful, they play music, they have lots of money, that everything just goes so well for them. With me on that? Yes, sometimes. So Eric Clapton's life, he's probably one of the great guitar players in the world right now, as I said before. But let me tell you a little bit about his life from the documentary and about how he found the power of love to transform his life. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about Reverend Michael Beckwith because it's the same kind of a story. You see, the stories are the stories. It doesn't matter about the story. We all have a story. Anybody in here not have a story? <laughs> we all do. 
And so it's what you do with that story that is so important for your growth and your development. What are you doing with that story? So Eric Clapton's story, he found out when he was only nine years old, and I'm still trying to figure this out because I, I just don't get this, but anyway, that his mother was his sister. Yeah. And it was very devastating to him, and he felt very rejected. He had a lot of pain throughout his life. And he had a lot of problems with drugs and alcohol and so on and so on, OK? But it's what he did. You see, when he had his little boy, his little boy was born, and he made a decision then. And he began the 12-step program and did all kinds of work with people to help people, the essence of spiritual love. He came out of himself, and he began to help others. And as a result of helping other people, he was able to free himself of his addiction. And he was doing it for his child, his little boy. And then his little boy was three or four years old, and he lived here in New York City somewhere. I'm sure all of you know the story. And he fell out of a window, and he passed away. But it's what he did. You see, this is what I want to talk to you about this morning. There's all kinds of things going on, but there's also what you do with the things that go on. The things in your own life, the things in lives around you, it's what you do with the things that are going on. He made a vow when his child passed away. He wrote a song called, I'll See You in Heaven. Everybody know that song? A beautiful song about his little boy and how he would see him in heaven. And he said then, and he probably didn't, he's not in our teaching, but this is the essence of our teaching. He made a decision that day when his little boy passed away that he was going to see him in heaven. And if he wanted to see him in heaven, he would not have to drink or do alcohol or do drugs ever, ever again. He made up his mind that day. Now, there was a choice there, wasn't there? This is what I'm talking about today. This is the essence of spiritual love, which transforms your consciousness. Because he made a choice, he chose love. He chose the love of his son. He chose that as an example for himself that he would change his life and he would not go back to that way of living. He certainly had the reason, didn't he? If you think about it, he certainly had the reason. And all of us sometimes have reasons, and we can go in one direction or another direction, but it's the direction that you go in the choice that you make for yourself in this teaching. This is really the essence of spiritual love, the essence of that power that is within us, that we recognize it, we know that it is there, and that we say, Spirit, guide me, guide my life. That's really what he was doing. He was letting go of his pain, and he was transforming his consciousness. He was changing that pain into love, spiritual love. He said, I really would like to. He believes in heaven. Some of you may, some of you may not. Some of us think heaven as a state of mind. Whatever it is that you believe, his belief kept him in sanity. Sanity, not insanity, but sanity became him because he made a choice to love instead of to hurt, to help instead of to hurt. That's what I'm talking to you about this morning. This is the message that comes through me. Reverend Michael Beckwith, who is a great author, a great speaker, a great minister, he ministers to thousands of people now all over the country, online. He does all kinds of work, always in service. And in this book that I was reading, which I read for the second time, and I always say to people, you read with your consciousness. If you read something three years ago, read it again, because you'll read it in a very different way, because your consciousness is always changing. So I read this book again, and I thought, I read this book in a different way. And I saw Reverend Michael Beckwith, who spoke about becoming or becoming the minister that he was because he made a decision just like Eric Clapton did. You see, he was dealing drugs. This is common knowledge. He writes about it in the book. He spoke about it on Oprah. He was dealing marijuana, and he had large stashes of marijuana, and he had them in his home, and he said, I'm just going to make one more delivery and then I'll stop. And it was that one more delivery that some informant told something about him, and he was caught, 
and he could have faced major jail time. And he said that he made a decision in that moment when he realized that he was going to court before a judge to become a spiritual being, to let go. He said, the drug person in me, the person that was dealing drugs, was gone. He no longer existed. You see? So these are the choices. This is the spirituality. You can do this with anything in your life. It's about the power of choice. But who are you making that choice with? That is the question to ask yourself this morning. Are you making it on the human level with your human self, with its doubt and its fear and all of the other things that go along with it? Or are you making it on the spiritual level where you are one with the spirit of life? And Michael Beck was said at the time when I was reading this book, which I thought was so wonderful, he said that he would never do this again and that if he were given the chance that he would give up his life to serve God or spirit in any way that spirit would like to be served. He made that decision. He made that choice. And as he made that choice, he went back into the courtroom and the judge said, for some reason, there was some kind of a challenge within the court case. I don't know all the details of it, but the judge said to him, I am giving you another chance. And he said he realized from that day forward that he would be in gratitude, that he would thank God every day, that he would count his blessings instead of his obstacles. Think about that. That he would count his blessings instead of his obstacles. We all count our obstacles sometimes instead of our blessings. True? We all do that. We all say, why did this happen? Why is this going wrong? We all do it. It's part of the human condition. That's why we come here. That's why we take lessons. That's why we study. We pray. But I am saying to you right now that the essence of this lesson is really about getting clarity, getting clear about moving forward in the right direction, making the right decision for yourself with the essence that is within you, that power. And Reverend Michael Beckwith went on to complete visioning, which is taught now in major corporations all over the world, because he made a decision to serve spirit within him and look where he was guided to. Now, all of us here today, maybe we're thinking, well, we're not Michael Beckwith's, but that's not, right. that's not the right thought because you don't compare yourself to other people. You just each and every day become the best person that you are capable of being in every area of your life. And how do you do that? You do that with the power that is within you. You do that with your spiritual power. My teacher used to say the power is always there, but it is our recognition of it you see, the power is there for you, but how are you recognizing it? Are you believing in it? The reading this morning spoke to that point. How much you believe in it, how much faith that you have. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has changed your ability. I'm thinking right now of someone that I had been treating for for about a year. I'm not mentioning names, but I've been treating for this person for a year. And this person would call me up and say to me, this is a true story, not mentioning names, this person would say to me, don't you get upset because all your treatment doesn't seem to be working? Because he was ticked off. Because he had a condition in his physical health that was very challenging. He was in a lot of pain. He was having all kinds of problems. But I would not stop keeping the high watch for him. I would not stop holding the high watch, that's what they call it. The high watch is where you see someone spiritually as they are, not as they think they are. And through treatment and through prayer, this person today has turned around, turned the life around, turned the pain around, and come full circle, receiving a treatment, receiving help, receiving the things that he needed so that he could be well, you see? Never doubt, never give up. As long as you are breathing, as long as you are here on the planet, go to spirit. Know that spirit is there for you. Begin to recognize it. Begin to know that it is there. Do your spiritual work. 
Never give up on yourself. You know, we look this week, there were two people that we lost this week, and we look at them also, and we could say that they had everything. Anthony Bourdain, wonderful cook, wonderful chef, traveled the world, did all kinds of things. And Kate Spade, who was a wonderful designer, sold her company for a couple billion dollars a few years ago. And you know, it's interesting because this was reported in the New York Times. She made a statement that's very key. Her older sister said to her, you really need to get some help. She had, they thought, bipolar. And she said, I can't go for help because it will hurt my brand. Isn't that interesting? It's very, very sad when you think about that people are so, like, into their image, you know, that they can let something like that hurt them. Your image is, it's, it, what is it? It's nothing. They all have images. We don't know what's in someone's mind. We really don't. We don't know. We were talking about that this morning. We do not know what was in someone's mind. You know. So what I'm saying to you is every day, remember what Reverend Michael Beckwith says, begin to count your blessings instead of your obstacles. If you need help, go to a practitioner. This teaching is wonderful. It is absolutely wonderful. I hear from people all of the time who have made such wonderful changes in their lives. Spiritual power is always there for you. You have to begin to recognize it. It's the same thing as plugging in the electricity. You plug it in, you turn on the light, and the light goes on. You have a light within you. That light is always shining. It is up to you to keep the wattage going. It is up to you to keep your light shining in this world, you see? And we can go through all kinds of adversity. Eric Clapton, he was addicted to heroin at one time in his life. He had all kinds of challenges, alcohol, all kinds of things. But he overcame it because he made a decision, you see? The power of decision. Raymond Charles Barker wrote that book many years ago. The power of decision, don't make a decision on your own, make it with spirit. Make a decision with spirit. When someone comes to me for spiritual mind treatment, I don't think what they think. If I did, there would be problems and nothing would be accomplished. I hold the high watch for people. And no matter what this person that I'm thinking of right now said to me, I would say to myself, there is not a word of truth to what he is telling me. The truth is that he is whole, perfect, and complete, and that he is having a revealing of health and wholeness. In other words, spiritual healing. On the spiritual level, we are all whole, perfect, and complete. And when we get that idea, and when we begin to work with our bodies and our minds and spirit, all things work together for our good for change. And I do believe that, and I do accept that. And I know that for each and every one of you this morning. We are, each and every one of us, blessed. Begin to count your blessings instead of your obstacles. Begin to know the truth about your life. God is definitely good, and God is always blessing us. And so with this lesson today, I wrote down three different things. And those three things for spiritual power are as follows. The first thing that I believe that anyone needs to have spiritual power, you already have it, but it's clarity. I love the idea of clarity. Clarity is so important. Getting clear, getting rid of all of that stuff that we have, getting rid of the idea that there's something wrong with us, get a new idea that there's something right with you. There's something right with you all of the time whether it be in your health, your well-being, finances, whatever it is, get a new idea about it and work with that idea, you see? I look at someone like Michael Beckwith or Eric Clapton, who is now married, Eric Clapton has a family, and he does all kinds of work to help people who have problems with addiction. He gives a lot of money to these things, and his life has been blessed, multiplied abundantly. He has had so many blessings in his life with his music, with everything. And it's the same with Reverend Michael Beckwith. 
His life has been blessed thousands and thousands of times. He's touched so many people's lives. He's always giving and always helping and always doing for other people. He's an example of a spiritual person on the planet, someone that has given his life to spirit. And while you and I may not do that to that capacity, we can do that in our own lives with whatever it is that we are doing. Whatever it is that you are doing, you can always do more of it. You can always be more and have more. That is what this teaching is about. And for some of you, it may not be material things. Whatever it is for you, acknowledge it and be at peace with it. And begin to work with acceptance and love. Begin to come from that spiritual power that is within you. Each and every one of you. We all have this power within us that is always blessing us, uplifting us, and encouraging us. So clarity. Clarity is so important. Sometimes we get very clear about what it is that we don't have. How about getting clear about what it is that you do have? How about beginning to practice gratitude? Having clarity means that you clear away all of your false ideas. And then number two is a practice of nonviolence. All of the great spiritual teachers have taught this. Nonviolence. I will not hurt people. I will help them regardless of their political views. It's so easy today to get triggered, yes? Yes. Turn on the TV and boom, that's what happens, okay? But if we practice the power of love, that love will come back to us. I went shopping this week and I was amazed because this man that was at the cashier register took all of my bags and said to me, I must be starting to look a lot older, but anyway, that's okay. But he said to me, I'm going to take all of your bags out and put them in your car for you. And you know, that was just an example of kindness, but it was really so nice for me. I appreciated it. I said, thank you. There are little things that we can do for each other each and every day to help one another rather than to hurt one another. Do you see the difference? That's nonviolence. Because people think of violence when you're out there hurting someone and you know, you're know you fighting. Violence comes from our thoughts. We have very violent thoughts. Some, I have them myself. I'm on the highway and I have to <laughs> practice. I have to practice. I have to practice. I have to become more conscious, more aware. I don't want the violence in my thoughts. I really don't. I don't want it because I know that it's not healthy. So practicing nonviolence, asking spirit for guidance, knowing that we are always guided into right action and right knowing, clearing out our consciousness. That is really what practicing nonviolence is all about, not hurting anyone. You know, when you don't want to hurt anyone, you're not hurting yourself. You hurt another person, you're hurting yourself. No matter what their political views are, we all have different views. And quite frankly, it's nobody's business what our views are. Isn't that true? I, that's how I feel about it. I'm sorry, maybe I'm wrong. But I don't think it's anybody's business what your political views are. So keep them to yourself. It's the same, you know? I mean, it's, an, it's really a better idea, I think. I really believe that. Maybe there'll be less tension, less problems. Pray for world peace, you know? Keep praying for world peace. Do something for and let go of the violence. Practice nonviolence in your life. You know, the Buddhists teach that. There's such a beautiful practice. Our teaching is like that. It's a beautiful practice to practice not being violent, to practice love. That is spiritual love. And then thirdly is doing your spiritual work. So doing your spiritual work, and this is something that I have to read with my glasses. So Michael Beckwith in his book, Spiritual liberation, says, how can I move from theory to practice? That's what I was talking about in the last couple of months. Theories are one thing. Practice is another. And then he says something very interesting that I want to share with you. He says, if you merely collect spiritual information without practicing it, you will develop spiritual indigestion and or constipation. Practice. Practice the presence. Practice what you are learning. 
don't only collect the information, but begin to practice. Practice every day through meditation. Practice letting go. At the end of the day, letting go of negation. Practice the skills you are given. Practice your conviction. Your conviction is very, very powerful. If you have conviction about something, if you have conviction, it means you have faith. It means you have faith in something happening through you. There is a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. Ernest Holmes, direct quote. What are you doing with that power? Not only for yourself, but other people as well. You know, when we do something for other people, that goodness comes back to us. I have found myself now, whenever I go somewhere, if someone has a need for something, I am sharing my good, my benefits with other people. I am giving some money to people without judgment, you see? Because we go, you know, people, some of my friends will say, why are you giving money to that person? I'll just go drink it away. That's their choice. You know, it's not mine. It's none of my business. It's my good will to help someone. Not to put them down, not to think less of them, but to give them something out of love. You may not agree with me, and that's okay, too. It's fine. But that's how I feel. And it makes me feel better to do something good for someone without judgment. Now, I have to share with you something else, because sometimes when you start giving to some of these places, especially by mail, you will get flooded. That has happened to me. My mailbox is full of things where people want me to donate to them. You know, that does happen. But I, ha I can't let that keep me from doing my good. That's the whole point. You see, we have our reasons why we don't want to do something, but they're only reasons. And when we're willing to let go of some of those reasons and just have kindness and just do well for other people and for ourselves, that is very important to us. So I love what he says, practice your conviction, practice giving your consent to all that is good in your life, practice gratitude. And I'm going to close this lesson with a quote from Reverend Michael Beckwith, and then I'll do a treatment for all of us. But I love something that he says because I think it speaks to the essence of this lesson. I highly recommend this book. It's a wonderful book. It really is. He's a, a, a wonderful human being. He says right here, I declare my willingness and my enthusiasm to enter a relationship with the spirit. My universe is alive with creativity in the smallest and grandest actions I perform. I am upheld, maintained, guided, and inspired by the source of creativity. I have complete trust in this indwelling power, and I give thanks for it. In all situations, I behold the power of spirit unfolding and expressing in and as and through me right now. And that is what each and every one of us have the freedom to do on a daily basis to express that power that is within us, to come out of that power of inspiration, to let go of the obstacles and to know that we are being blessed on a daily basis. And with that, I would like to close this lesson with a spiritual mind treatment. So please join me in consciousness as I speak this word for each and every person in this room. And I am knowing, understanding, and completely accepting that God is good. And so that goodness of God is now reflecting throughout each and every person in this room, including the speaker. Each one then is connected to the spirit on a greater level than ever before. Each one then is, through this connection, creating a divine idea of knowing that they are part of this presence and this power, this greatness that not only contributes to their health and well-being, but contributes to their well-being in every way, shape, and form. As a result of this word spoken into law, each and every person in this room is blessed with greater health, greater wealth, greater creativity and self-expression, and more loving, harmonious relationships. Where there has been an attitude of negation, that negation is completely uprooted, cleansed, neutralized, and dissolved into the nothingness from whence it came. And each one, not only by this word, is expressing joy and love and power in their lives, but is transformed in consciousness, is renewed, uplifted, and inspired to move out into life, loving their lives, and being kind to others and kind to themselves. No longer is the idea of self-deprivation or self-deprecation 
an idea in mind. It is completely released, neutralized, dissolved, not to return. Each person then counts their blessings on a daily basis and lets go of any appearance of obstacle. Knowing that this is the truth and that each one is filled with spiritual power and filled with spiritual love, each one then is transformed by the renewing of the mind. And with love and gratitude for the wonderful way that spirit is at work in each and every one of our lives, I simply say thank you, spirit, and release this word into the law with love and gratitude, knowing it is done, it is done. So be it, and together we say, and so it is, and that is the way it is. Thank you very much, and so ends our lesson.